soccer and Galveston and the Galaxy? Um, the city, I love it. Um, and my missus and my little ones really enjoying it as well. Just because of the weather and we can go to parks and stuff like that. So it's been really nice. Um, football side, soccer side of things, it's been good. Um, the standards a lot better than, than uh, people make out in Europe. Um, we've had some tough games. We've had some good uh, performances. Um, um, the Seattle game was tough. Um, from my debut, um, I, I got a kick on my ankle the first few minutes, so I couldn't really move. And yeah, so I had to come off at half time. And then the LAFC game was just, it was a really good game. Um, I thought we defended really well. And then hopefully we can just keep building on that and um, get better and better. And I think one thing the gaffer really wants to do is get a lot better on the ball um, as a team and know what we want to do. So we've been working on that the last few days. Uh, and has your impression of the league um, changed at all? I mean, of course, you, I mean, you're here, of course, you want to be here, but what, what was your impression coming into Major League Soccer? Um, I always, because I, whenever I go away with the Ireland team, we always look at the other teams, and um, the more I go away, the more MLS players I see on their, in their squads. So I knew there was a lot of international players here, and the standards a lot better than um, what people make out to be. So I kind of expected it to be decent. Um, and it definitely is. Um, as you've seen against the teams we've played, there's more and more international players playing week in, week out. So yeah, I, I definitely, I expected this. Um, I definitely didn't take it for granted. Hi Derek, um, we haven't gotten to talk to you since that fabulous tackle assist. Can you just walk us what you, through what you saw in that play? And then secondly, follow up, um, how do you feel your voice is being used slash heard as a leader on this back line? Um, Jonathan Bond had a lot of good things to say to you after last win. Um, the tackle assist, uh, I seen Cheech and I said, Cheech just stay there. And then, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I, uh, I literally just made the tackle. Um, and then, lucky enough, it went to Chicha, and he does what he does. He puts it away. Um, but no, I didn't see him or anything. I just tried to, just to win the ball. Um, and yeah, I try to talk as much as I can. Um, that's one thing I want to make sure I do is, is to try to be a leader at the back, talking loads, organising. Um, I definitely we can't be conceding two goals a game. I don't think that's nowhere near good enough. And um, so definitely, that's one of my goals throughout the season, just to get a lot more shot outs and um, as a team defend better and I think LAFC was the first game we felt like uh, we were defending as a team. Um, I felt the other games we were kind of um, not as much organised, we were more spread out but LAFC you can see we were in banks of fours and we looked pretty solid and I felt like they couldn't break us down um, so uh, yeah it was a lot better. And was it on your Instagram we saw you guys riding bikes around uh, the facility? Yeah, yeah. You guys seem like, are you, are you having fun with the team? What's, what's the vibe like amongst this group right now? Yeah, a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of good guys here. And as soon as I got here, they made me feel welcome. And um, we have a little saying, play like brothers. And I feel like we are like that at the minute. We are getting really close. And um, that comes from the management team. Um, the first day they came in, they... They, the, some of the drills they do to make you interact with each other and it's been really good and I've always say when you're closer as a team you always if you're close um, personal wise with your players and teammates you always do better on the pitch um, it makes you want to work hard for each other and um, go that extra mile for each other and if someone has a bad a bad day or a, misses a tackle you know the next person's right there to help you and yeah it's, it's been good. Thank you, Derek. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Next thing, we'll go next to Gio Garcia. Gio, go ahead. Hey, Derek. Uh, congrats, obviously, uh, on that assist and the slide tackle. You had a lot of slide tackles uh, in this past game. Is, is that one of your attributes as a defender? Um, yeah, I like to get stuck in. Um, I like to. I like to let them know the forwards that they're not going to have an easy game, and I'm going to be physical in in their faces. Um, I'm still not up there fully mat fit, uh, match fitness, I feel like, just yet. Um, so there's a couple of, I kind of missed. <laughs> but I know after a few games I'll, I'll get my match fitness up and get my awareness back and 
yeah, I'm just trying to work on that at the minute. I know you have talked about uh, you guys don't want to be conceding more than two goals a game. Uh, what kind of conversations have you had with the back line and, and developing Bond about, about that? We've had a lot, um, especially with Dan, the coach. Um, we go over video near enough every day, um, just seeing what we can do better in the games, um, talking-wise, looking over our shoulders, where we should have our line, um, just everything, really. And um, I felt like against LA, LAFC, it's slowly and surely um, we're putting it to work. Um, I felt we looked pretty solid. Uh, I think the shots they did have... Um, they were kind of outside their box, outside of our box, and they they weren't really threatening. Um, Bondi made a few good saves in the first half, um, but other than that, we felt kind of comfortable. I, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Next to John Rojas. John, go ahead. Thank you. Um, there's there's one thing on on MLS or on MLS that especially people coming from South America see, and is the diversity of the tactical standpoints, different kind of coaches from different parts of the world. If you go to England, most of the coaches are, you know, English or yeah, Irish. If you go to Spain, most Europeans. But do you see that? you see a, a, a wide difference of tactics and the teams that you see in, uh, and facing up to now here in MLS? Yeah, definitely. Um, which, which is good. I feel like it's good for the league to have different tactics and um, Managers implement what they want to do. Um, for example, Red Red Bull were a very intense game. They were very direct. Um, they played the long ball a lot and made sure they got a lot of people around it. And then you had people like um, Seattle. They were they got they passed the ball really well. They were solid. They were really organized. Uh, they made it difficult for ourselves. Um, and then LAFC again. They were very good on the ball. They they pass it really well, um, and they were they were organised as well. But th those three teams were very different um, how they played, and it was it's a good experience for all of us. Um, and I think it is good to have such a mixture. To you don't really know what you're expecting. Uh, the next game can be completely different than the one before, so it's good. Hey Sean, we we'll go to jo uh, Josh Gassman with Corner Galaxy. Yes, Josh, go ahead. Hey Derek, uh, uh, one of the sort of get your thoughts on, on, on Greg Vanny and what he's bringing to this team and, and maybe had you had any sort of preconceived notions before joining the Galaxy about what his teams were like? Yeah, um, I knew of him before, um, his teams in Toronto. So whenever I used to look up at and uh, take an interest in MLS, I always seen his Toronto sides doing well, um, the way they played, the way they passed it out. Um, Giovinco, Bradley and teams like that and I always seen that they dominated a lot of the game so I was excited to, to work with him and ever since he's been in here it's been it's been fantastic to work with him. Um, his ideas, he's very tactical which is really good. He goes over every the small details and he wants to play the right way. He wants to play, get the ball down and pass it and create overloads score goals, be attacking, and he wants to win the game. So he sets out to win every game, which is great, because um, a lot of managers don't do that. Sometimes they can be fearful, um, but he does that. He attacks it, and every day, even you learn something every day from, it could be a two-minute talk you have with him just in the physio room, and he says something, you're just like, oh, yeah. that's You just take it on board and just listen, and I'm kind of like a sponge at the minute, just soaking up everything he wants from me and the team and just trying to learn every day. Awesome. That's uh, all the questions we'll take for Derek today. Derek, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for your time, Greg. Um, no problem, thanks. Kevin Cabral is here. He's trained. I understand he's available for selection. What do you see in him or what are your plans for him? Yeah, uh, he's been in training this week. And, um, yeah, the, the profile of what we saw for the player is he is – very good on the move, uh, picks up the ball, he moves the ball quickly, combines well, he's looking to get behind. He's always organizing and looking to finish attacks, but organizing attacks and, uh, and trying to get behind the opposition can play in one-on-one -on -one situations, but also very good playing in combination, uh, running without the ball. Um, but just a, he's a player that once he gets on the moves, on the move there, he wastes no steps. It's everything is fluid and it's 
Uh, it's graceful, and he's looking to get, again, like I said, he's looking to organize that final action um, in, in and around the goal, whether that's crosses or finishes, things like that. And so uh, still a young player, still um, want to introduce him the right way to the, to the league and, and to uh, our team, and so he's clear in understanding what we're trying to do. But loads of talent, um, again, just a, a different level of speed in terms of um, game breaking, opening up a, um, an opposition, getting behind, playing in transition. These kinds of things just give us a whole other dimension um, that we haven't really had just yet. Uh, so um, that's what I see in him. That's what I see in training. And, and he's just getting kind of settled in with his teammates and surroundings and, um, and understanding what it is that we're, we're working towards. You plan on using him Saturday, and if so, how? What, what's your game? How much do you think? Yeah, I'd like him to be involved. He's gone through, uh, you know, a reasonable amount of training between his quarantine training and the training with the team, and uh, he hasn't been long off from his team in France, so it's not like he's out of out of shape. He uh, he just needs to sharpen up a little bit. It was a few weeks that between when he last played and and now, so it's just again getting more familiar. So I, I'd like for him to be involved this weekend. Uh, how much time will determine really what based on the game and and how things are going and. Um, and what makes sense. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. We'll go next to uh, Damien Callahan. Damien, go ahead. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Well, Damien, thanks. Um, we, we just got finished talking to Derek Williams. Um, what, when did he first get on your radar, and what's been your early impressions of him so far? Yeah, you know, he's he's a player because uh, of his American citizenship, who I think is all MLS clubs are have, are aware of those players just because when you can bring them back after their ex their experience that they've had in Europe or bring them over, there there's there's something unique about them. Uh, so he, he's actually been someone that the club has been keeping an eye on for a couple years now. Uh, so when I came in, uh, I was introduced to him from, from our people, uh, watched him. Um, just as I got to know him. Uh, and then we worked out an arrangement to, you know, through DC to actually get his, get his rights and to try to, to get him here. Uh, he is, you know, what I, what I liked from him is he's a powerful, strong defender who, who is a communicator. He's an organizer. He's a talker. He has presence in the back line. Um, I, I like having a left footed player on the left side of our, our back line. It gives us balance. There's not a ton of those out there. Like you really, um, you have to do some work to find left-footed, left center backs who can do the things that, that um, you want them to do, uh, and especially those that, that have those leadership qualities that, we're, that we've been talking about, about our back line for a while. So I saw those in him. He's comfortable on the ball. He has great range of, range of passing because he did, he did initially start off as a fullback who was you know, involved in attacking and all that, so he's a, there's a comfort level on the ball. So he brings a lot of qualities. You know, the first thing for us is when we got him here, he was coming off of a quad surgery and we needed to get him healthy, get him fit. We wanted to take our time through that process. Unfortunately, he had a little bit of setback at the beginning, uh, but now he's starting to get his fitness, his legs, his familiarity with the league and with the team and all that kind of stuff is there. And, um, and, I, and my, you know, I suspect he'll just keep getting better as things go. Obviously, the tackle last game was just that. of It was a powerful tackle that turned into a transition and an opportunity. Um, but in terms of details, we're, we're still working through that. Is he still getting sharper and fitter as uh, he gets back into Mac full form? And is there any update on Sega? Oh, these visa processes are killing me, but... Uh, they are slow. Uh, he has um, he has the approval. We're working on the appointment. Uh, hopefully, the appointment will will get it. Um, we'll get that hopefully sooner rather than later. And then hopefully things will turn around faster than they did with Kevin, just because there was a administrative hiccup in that. So uh, I, I hope we'll see him here early next week. But there's no promises on that. I, I'm uh, I've said that before, and it and it was slower than that. But I hope we can do this you know a little bit quicker. All right, thanks, Greg. Yeah. Thanks, Damien. We'll go to uh, Nikki Kay next. Nikki, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, Nikki. Now, by now, all of Javier's goals have come with uh, Ethan on the field at the same time. Is there something specific about his presence that unlocked something for Chicharito? Yeah. Again, I, I think it's the it's the running. It's the the vertical running. It's the types of running that forces the center backs and other opposition to have to respect it. And 
what it does is it pulls the back line apart and, and different things. I think the, the goal this weekend didn't necessarily relate specifically to that because it was kind of a second phase of a corner kick and uh, a great tackle that found Javier's feet at the right place at the right time and he did what he, what he does. Um, but generally, yes, I think there is, for us, the, it's, the, it's the balance between having players who want to use space between the lines and players who want to receive the ball behind the back line so that we, we are stretching the opposition, we're making the back line have to make decisions and protect the depth, which then opens up space in between. And Ethan has been giving us that um, you know, through, through these last few games for sure. Uh, it's something we want to continue to get a balance of between our outside players, our inside players, and Javier, and, and having uh, more players doing that. I think that's coming as we start to get fit. Samuel's getting fitter. He put in a, a lot of high-speed running last game. We just want that running to be more fruitful for him and for the team as we continue to go. Uh, Kevin brings that to us um, as other guys are also starting to, to appreciate the value of that running. We're, we're going to get it from more places as we continue forward. And with Julian, is there something specific about his style of play that makes him such a versatile tool for you guys that maybe not other players share, but something special and unique to him? Yeah, you know, Julian's is capacity, his physical capacity is just off the charts between his capacity to repeat these long runs and these attacking runs and still recover, uh, his ability to do that at high speed because he's got uh, an incredible amount of speed to go and he's just, he has an aggressive personality. He wants to, he wants to go make things happen. Uh, for us is again finding the balance as he comes into a new season and he's got to get his feet under him again. Last year he was in a rhythm, uh, this year it's a, it's a start after a long break and getting that. Uh, and I think in the second half, he had a fantastic second half. I thought that was the best uh, uh, best performance he's had for us this year. He really focused in on defending and, and using his, his quickness to close out on those wingers and get tight and make things difficult. But then in the right moments, he was able to break out and get to attacks. So for us, he's still a young player who who we want to get his priorities in, in the right places at the right moments, which is what we're trying to do with him. Uh, and right now we've really emphasized the defending side and making him, getting him sharper and focusing on, on being a great defender. And as he's done that in the second half, we want to see that again and starting to release him more as we get that stuff uh, tightened up. And so uh, I still see him with, as a young man with incredible upside. He's just at the start of a new season and having to find that rhythm again and prioritize the right things at the right moments and, and set that because he's aggressive. He wants to just go. And again, it's, it's about balance and, and the moments. And so um, I just think he has the capacity to do all of those things. It's just, again, it's the choices of when and where and, and all that kind of stuff that we want to get, get right. Wonderful. Thanks. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Next thing, we'll go to Scott French next. Scott, go ahead. Hey, Greg, I wanted to get your impression of, uh, of Austin and of the job that, uh, uh, that Josh and his staff are doing. Yeah, they, they've, you know, results-wise, they've done really well. I think, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me how they play. I think it, there's a lot of familiarity there between what they're trying to do and what we saw from the Columbus teams uh, in the past. Uh, good in possession, really trying to get their wingers on in these, what they call progressions, working inside and outside into the depth and get their fullbacks high into the attacks. Um, so it's a, it, there's a lot of similarities there, and, and we saw that from those Columbus teams. They've got some good speed and athleticism. Um, they've been pretty aggressive uh, through early games when possible in terms of their pressing and, and trying to be proactive. But I think they've started the season with just a lot of confidence and belief. Uh, they have some good quality players. Um, they haven't started the season with, you know, um, with concern or questions in terms of how well they're going to do. And I think that's that's allowed them to be pretty positive in terms of the results that they've been able to get. They've created opportunities. Uh, I think there's, you know, what we got to do is exploit some of the gaps in their defending that have shown up. You know, I thought teams have been able to play through them at times and create opportunities. Um, we need to be able to do that better. Our primary focus really for this weekend is on us. I think, you know, the first four games of the season, I think we've done a nice job of playing against our opposition, not so much against Seattle, but the other games and the results we got, we've got to also now really take a step to really work on us and our vision and, uh, and getting some things tight for us because, you know, we want to have the ball more than we had it last week. That's something that we want to, to make progr uh, progress on. And so our emphasis really been on them. But Josh, it doesn't surprise me. He's a good coach. I think he's got a good formula um, that has been successful in the past. And 
He's just translating that. He's been able to build a team off of the pieces exactly what he wants, you know, go out and find those over the course of a couple years to, to find the pieces that, that fit what they want to do. And they've done a nice job. That's no surprise with the group of people that they have working there together. Thank you, Greg. Yep. We'll go next to Josh Gessman. Josh, go ahead. Hey, Greg. Thanks for the time, as uh, as always. Um, I, I wanted to get if we could get a status update on Victor. I know he missed last game. I think it was for a, a groin injury. Has he been training with the group? And are there any other injuries that you're uh, concerned about at the end of the weekend? Uh, Victor has worked through some progressions in training this week. Uh, we'll have a better sense tomorrow as he does the final sort of progression to see if he's ready for for the weekend. Um, so that's there. He did train with the group today. Uh, still some things, you know, when it comes to growings, it's being able to strike balls over distance, do that with some form of repetition without fear that you're gonna we're going to create more issues. So we'll know a little bit more tomorrow after training on his availability, but he is making the right steps forward. Uh, in terms of the weekend, I can't think of anybody else um, that is uh, specifically out. O'Neill Fisher has been making some progress. He had a little bit of um, a growing strain coming out of the, of the last week um, or the beginning of our training week, and we'll just see where he's at. But, um, again, he's made some progress towards the weekend. Everybody else, I think, is more or less and ready to go. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. We'll go next to John Rojas. John, go ahead. Chris. Greg, uh, thanks for the time. With uh, Kevin, I guess you imagine us, we all see him on the wings. Is that correct? Or, or you see him playing in the middle sometimes. And if you stick with him on the wings, I guess, you know, you move your pieces around with Seba, Saldana, yeah. and, and Victor. Is that right? Yeah, so I, I do primarily see him on the wing, but I, he is very capable of playing as a forward or to play in a two-forward system. Uh, he's done an, that a fair amount at his previous club, but I do initially for us see him as a, as a winger who can, again, get, it, get into the depth off the outsides and, and create some problem in, in the wide channels and in the, in the space behind the back line. Um, yeah, it gives us it gives us options. You know, we're not going to start the same ten players or, or eleven players every single game, and we're not we're going to have different we're going to set up in different ways sometimes. Um, so it gives us another very good option, as the ones you mentioned with Seba and Victor and Jonah and Javier, uh, Efra, uh, Sam. We've got we've got some good options now, and all those players. A lot of those players are pretty different in what they bring to the game. So depending on what we're looking for, we have some, some options and some competition and, and some quality. So we're, we're excited about that. Um, and we'll, we'll, you know, as guys get together and start playing together, we'll see what the best combinations are for the right moments and all that stuff as they start to learn each other and I get to know more about them together as well. Awesome. That's all the uh, questions we'll take. For today. Great. We appreciate it. Okay. Office. Thanks, everyone. Have a good, oh, good yeah. day. I used to play for Santa Barbara Soccer Club, too. Oh, really? So yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes. um, and we just got uh, talking to Coach Vanny about kind of your development this season and from being physical and aggressive to kind of getting you familiar and comfortable along that back line. I just wanted to kind of get a pulse on how you're feeling game by game, and you obviously had an outstanding half against LAFC. So <coughs> what, what are your thoughts on how you've evolved throughout the past four games? Yeah, so, you know, coming back from the Olympics was very difficult for me. Um, going to the to preseason in, in Arizona was um, – I felt a little rusty, not as confident as I as I wanted to feel going in or coming back with the squad. Um, I know the first couple games here of the season, I wasn't um, at my best. Um, I felt like I needed that LAFC game. Uh, moving forward, I feel very confident. Um, I feel like these coaches have helped me a lot uh, to to learn my position and, and just uh, just give me a lot of confidence. Um, but I feel very good. Um, I know what my role is and. Uh, they make it very clear for me uh, what they want from me and, and how, how I should have, or yeah, just, they just make my, my role very clear and, I, and I'm like, I'm very confident. I'm, I want to continue to perform and uh, keep my performances at a high, at a high standard. And um, yeah, I just want to keep it going. Awesome. Thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, Nikki. We'll go to uh, Kathy Castorina next with ESPN. Kathy, go ahead. Thanks, Chris. Hi, Julian. Hello. Uh, talking about how that LAFC game, it's something you needed. What did that game do for you? And did you 
change something maybe in your preparation and and how will that affect going forward like you mentioned your confidence and just the, the work that you do every day um no so i think just um just playing LAFC you know I, I I knew it was going to be a battle I knew it was going to I was going to need to leave everything out there as well as my all my teammates and uh yeah I think just getting that win and just having a a, a very good performance was was just something that I needed to to build my confidence up I knew I was confident going into this game um just because it's LAFC man I I, I always want to beat them I never want to lose to these team and I never want to lose to any team but LAFC is a different, it's just a different mentality for me, um, but I want to keep this mentality moving forward um, in regards to preparation. I don't think I did anything different, um, but yeah, I think it was just, just that game that I, that I kind of needed because I knew um, how my mentality is with this game, but I want to keep it moving forward for, for each and every game now. And in terms of those high-intensity games, like the rivalry, how can you... Uh, make it a, a regular thing, you know, tying into that maybe that feeling in, in other games, and especially now, do you feel any pressure knowing that you have eyes on you and uh, I don't know, there's interest around around you? Um, no, not really. I, I just um, I'm just focused here, um, just trying to trying to develop myself, uh, working hard every day, and um, just trying to learn the position more and more each and every day. I know the past couple of years I wasn't. Um, I was learning a little bit about the position. I was moving to right wing and, and right back. I know I did a little bit this uh, against Seattle, but um, these coaches have, have been very, very clear on what they want from me and, and how I watch film ev after every game with, with, uh, with one of the assistant coaches just to improve the things that I need to improve on. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just focused here, just trying to learn each and every day, take advice from the, from the veterans here, from the coaches, and from everyone around me, and just uh, apply it to my game every day. And Kathy, we'll go next to Alicia Rodriguez. Alicia, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, Julian, taking off a little bit off uh, your last answer there, um, you mentioned playing a little bit uh, further up uh, against Seattle. Uh, do you like to play you know, multiple positions and, and get some experience at a couple different spots, or um, would you prefer to stay at right back, or are you somebody who just wants to be on the field? It doesn't matter where you are. Yeah, so I, I obviously I'm I'm young. Uh, I want to be on the field at all times, at whatever position I'm playing. I, I want to help the team and give, give whatever I can. And uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I definitely do prefer right back. Um, but playing right wing gives me a little bit of a, just a, just when I'm playing right back, it just kind of helps me learn the position and where I'm gonna want um, my right wing to be. Um, it just helps me a lot, to be honest. I went over the game when I was playing right wing and just uh, seeing when I, if I was O'Neal in that game, where he would want me. It, it helps me just uh, kind of, kind of uh, just communicate with the right wing in, in another, in, like against LAFC, I knew where I wanted my right wing and, and how he was gonna help me. But I don't mind it. Uh, I, like I said, I want to be on the field at all costs or what, whatever at whatever position I'm playing. But I definitely do, uh, and I'm more comfortable at right back. Thank you. We're going to ask to Salvador Perez with goal. Salvador, go ahead. Thanks, Grace. Hello, Julian. How are you? Hello. Good in yourself. Nice to nice to see you, Julian. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, what do we can expect of this LA Galaxy for the match against Austin FC? Coming up from a victory from two and one on the traffic go against LFC. And I just want to ask you uh, your thoughts about uh, how your teammate Efrain Alvarez being called up to the previously lift for the Coca Cup National League with the Mexican National League. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, in regards to Efra, um, you know, he deserves it, man. He, he works hard every day in training, he's been showing it these past these past couple of weeks and he showed it in the game against LAFC and whenever he comes on he makes a difference um like I said he deserves it uh he 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 will he will continue to work hard and, and be the best version of himself uh, I've definitely seen a, a difference from uh from the previous years of this year with him uh just regarding everything to be honest how, how he how he takes care of himself and and how he how he goes about his days and and his um and his profession but yeah um uh, regarding the team and, and Saturday, um, I know we're gonna want to keep the ball a lot, move it, move it um, from side to side, and uh, we're looking just to just to try to break them down and um, score goals. Man, we want to we want to score more goals and then keep a clean sheet for sure. 
Awesome. That's all the questions we're going to take for today. We uh, we need to let Julian get to his haircut now. Uh, the Galaxy Takeoffs FC on Saturday, and uh, Julian will unveil his new haircut as well. So thanks everyone for taking the time. Thanks, Julian. <laughs>